Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for today's webinar um, titled Explore SpectreSoft, where we'll be looking at uh, SpectreSoft's employee activity monitoring solutions and insider threat detection solutions. My name is Ezra Charm and I'm joined today with our presenter Matt Farr, one of our senior sales engineers. Uh, just a quick housekeeping item, if you look on your GoToWebinar uh, dashboard panel there, you'll see a little questions box. Um, if you can please enter any questions you have during the presentation into that uh, little panel there, we'll address them all at the end. If we don't uh, address your question uh, during the live demo, somebody will follow up with you after. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Matt and uh, let him take it away from here. Go ahead, Matt. Thanks, Ezra. Uh, welcome, everybody, this afternoon to the first of a series of demonstrations that we're going to give on our corporate monitoring solutions. Um, uh, the topic today, Employee Activity Monitoring Insider Threat Detection. We're going to dive into uh, our product suite on the corporate side and what we can do to give you guys some insight into your environment from a user activity perspective and how to set yourself up for uh, proactively and preventative measures for insider threats and uh, some various areas of interest uh, that we'll see here going forward. And uh, My name is Matt Farmer, Sales Engineer with SpectreSoft. And uh, just to kick things off a little bit before we get into the product demonstration, I'd like to give you guys some background on SpectreSoft. Uh, SpectreSoft, we are a leader in employee activity monitoring and insider threat detection. Uh, the company was founded in 1998. And uh, we essentially are looking to protect your business uh, from data theft, employee fraud, data breaches, compliance uh, violations, and we, we do this in essentially real time. We're going to gather this data uh, off the endpoints and allow you to see that aggregated data and report on it. So this monitoring and alerting uh, on your employee activity and system events uh, provides you with a uniquely detailed, very timely, and actionable information to lower your risk, ensure that you're compliant, uh, and obviously increase your security uh, within your environment. Um, we are headquartered uh, in the southern part of Florida with also offices out in Utah and an office over uh, the pond in the UK where we have uh, more than 36,000 companies worldwide utilizing our solutions. And to uh, look into that a little bit deeper, over 7,200 uh, customers are utilizing the corporate Spectre 360 product and we're deployed in over 113 countries worldwide. As you can see, we've had some recognition from uh, some uh, very prominent uh, articles in Inc. 500, uh, Redmond Magazine, PC Magazine, and so forth. So what do we do? Uh, SpectreSoft, we create software that empowers your company with critical information regarding the digital behavior of your users. So uh, on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis, uh, we're going to provide you with the information necessary uh, to analyze and view uh, important areas of interest. This could revolve around communication, such as email, uh, chat communication, even webmail usage, uh, which is becoming uh, very popular. Uh, productivity is another area of interest. Being able to track websites uh, that your users are visiting, what applications or programs are they using, uh, what are they searching for online? Uh, what, what is their user activity like? Uh, in, in essence, basically, you know, how much time are they active within, on their machines versus inactive? And, and then obviously the big one is security. You know, looking at the keystrokes or the input that's been putting into the machine at a very granular level, uh, being able to uh, see what type of data is coming in and out uh, of their particular machine with the file transfers or network activity. And then a big one is uh, movement of data, you know, document tracking. Uh, is our sensitive data, our intellectual property, is it safe? Is it being moved? Uh, how do we track it or even uh, alert on data that's being, let's say, moved from our uh, internal network to the cloud or to removable devices? And these are areas of uh, interest that we address with the various functionality of our uh, software. The, um, if we look at this and the benefit of uh, putting in place a monitoring solution like ours in your environment, uh, it allows you to transform this uh, digital uh, 
data or this behavior information into business intelligence. It empowers you uh, through reporting and various capabilities that we give you with alerting uh, through what we call our dashboard. Uh, this facilitates you in the detection and identification and assessment of dangerous uh, and costly user behavior. Uh, and this starts with obviously the inside. It starts with the insider threat. Uh, very common concern. Uh, the insider threat is uh, typically the most difficult one to uh, handle because those are individuals that have access to a lot of the resources that we want to monitor or track. Um, the insider typically uh, that can pose a threat to us are individuals with elevated access within our environment. They have access to that file share. They have access to that intellectual property. They work with it on an ongoing basis. So it makes it very difficult to narrow down or track uh, the insider. And with our software, we're going to uh, see various ways with being able to monitor that activity uh, for our um, you know, elevated users so that uh, we can prevent against that insider threat. Uh, Compliance-based environments, this is obviously another big topic, uh, whether you're HIPAA compliant, SOX compliant, GOBA, uh, the compliance standards uh, have, that are put in place require us to put policies and technology uh, uh, in place going forward uh, to stay compliant. And how do we identify breach uh, breaches within that compliancy? And we can help you address that also with the various data that we're able to collect. Obviously, there are ethical concerns, uh, inappropriate behavior within our environment. Uh, these are topics that a lot of times lead to very expensive lawsuits uh, against companies that cause uh, extreme financial loss. Now, these are big uh, areas of concern also that if we can put something in place where we can be notified and we can be uh, have a pulse, I should say, on our environment, we can prevent these ethical concerns or these ethical problems from surfacing. And then, you know, also from a productivity standpoint, there's various research showing that uh, organizations that are notifying their employees that uh, monitoring is uh, possible and uh, that they have the right to do that, their productivity has gone up uh, considerably. So productivity uh, increases can also come about from, you know, obviously having this type of solution in place and we can enable you uh, to have a faster, more accurate way of minimizing this risk uh, of these various areas, initiating action, you know, if you know about it from this proactive uh, solution that uh, we'd like to demonstrate today, that you can take appropriate action uh, before things surface uh, or elevate to um, a dangerous level. And you can implement this, improve your productivity, and identify resource utilization and where you can enhance opportunity within your environment utilizing this as well. So these are some key areas and some topics that we address with our corporate monitoring solutions. And I, we wanted to cover that uh, at the beginning here as a kind of an intro into the demonstration. So as we talk about all that uh, and we look at our product suite, now how do we determine what is the right fit? Well, we like to look at this in three different ways. Uh, we like to look at this as um, what we consider uh, active, passive, and reactive monitoring. Uh, these, these are basically different approaches that we can take uh, with the various solutions that we provide. Uh, the Spectre 360 application is enterprise class uh, monitoring. And um, actually our graphics here are, are swapped, so uh, you know, not, not to confuse you, but the enterprise class active, monitor, active monitoring allows you to gather this information, uh, store this information in a secure backend SQL database. So you have this relational database backend, and that's going to allow you to, on an ongoing basis, actively see what's happening within your environment. At any given point in time, we can look at trends, we can analyze the data, uh, we can uh, you know, look at averages over time. And this allows us to obviously take action based on security concerns or productivity concerns. More importantly, it will identify red flags. Uh, being able to have this data on an ongoing basis and to establish some sort of baseline with a lot of this information, we can then see items that stick out, things that are abnormal, that are red flags that we should possibly look into even further. 
Without a solution in place where you actually can see this and have a pulse in your environment, it's impossible to know um, efficiently when these particular items surface. This sometimes raises uh, a level of concern, right? We talk about monitoring uh, activities at the user end. Um, you know, we've all heard of the big brother uh, type pushback or the you know, concerns about privacy. Well, and that's legitimate. And a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, that can be uh, something that uh, we hear or you might run into or you may not even be real knowledgeable about on your end as far as, you know, can I really do this? How do I do this? Is it legal? And these are all things that you should look into, obviously, uh, in your own uh, city, state, uh, country. But we have developed a secondary option when we get into, uh, we're talking about the Spectre 360 recon application. This, this kind of takes a turn towards what we would call passive monitoring, a little bit different approach where you know, we're gathering the same information at the endpoint. So we're able to know that we are still collecting information that we would need from a security concern or an ethics concern. However, we're not actively viewing that data. And the way we accomplish that with the recon is recon uh, is a mode of the 360 application that would allow you to collect that information on an ongoing basis. But hold it locally on that machine, locked away, encrypted, so that no one can access that data unless we're alerted on an event that would justify going in and unlocking that data and reviewing it. So it's a very unique approach to, uh, again, keeping that pulse on our environment, but not actively having that information all the time and reviewing it. So Recon collects this data locally, stores it locally, uh, an encrypted file, and is only accessible if there is just cause. Now, just cause with recon means that an alert has been triggered based on some sort of action on the endpoint uh, that the user, uh, let's say, sends an email with, let's say, inappropriate language or with keywords that we have uh, assigned to the recon agent that uh, are inappropriate or, let's say, are a security breach. When these type of uh, events they place, the recon agent alerts the administrator that, hey, this has taken place on this endpoint by this user. These are the keywords. Uh, this is what took place, whether it was program usage or an email or web activity. And then you can decide based on that alert whether that's just cause to uh, then take the next step, which would be to go in and unlock that data off the local endpoint and report on it. So it's a very unique approach, a different approach than what we would consider active monitoring with the full Spectre 360 application. The Spectre 360 recon gives us that same collection of data but doesn't allow access to it unless there's just cause uh, via uh, logging and alerting. So I will demonstrate to you guys today, and we'll take a look at the Spectre 360 application in its entirety, and then I'll demonstrate the difference uh, between running that uh, Spectre 360 detail mode versus the recon mode. The third option you see here is the reactive uh, approach. And that comes into play when something has happened within an organization, you know, whether it, uh, whether it be, um, you know, uh, a tip-off that there is some sort of uh, inappropriate behavior taking place or uh, their, their uh, employee is leaving and you're, you know, afraid that this employee could cause damage to the company. It's basically a reactive approach or a reaction to an event that's already happened. Your hair is on fire, basically. Help me get better uh, information on what is taking place. And the CNE investigator um, application is what we can use for that. It's a very focused, temporary investigative tool uh, that's good for the small business, a one-off machine, uh, or for, let's say, very targeted investigations. So uh, a different purpose for the CNE investigator product, uh, very targeted to individuals uh, that, you know, for some reason, uh, one way, shape, or form have warranted investigation. And we can use this on a focused, temporary basis to investigate that particular event uh, and then um, move on. So that's a, a different solution uh, than the Spectre 360 solution, which is the uh, ongoing management, whether it's passive or active. 
All right, so uh, that being said, let's get into taking a look at the product. I'm going to overview the 360 application with you guys. And uh, once we go through the uh, demonstration of the product, uh, I'm going to show you guys the difference between the uh, detail mode, which we'll look at first, and what the recon mode uh, really looks like. All right, so switching over to my um, machine here. So here I have uh, what we call the control center of the Spectre 360 application. Uh, Spectre 360 has two interfaces that you'll be familiar with. It's the control center is more of the administrative back end. This is where we're going to do um, our initial configuration and management of machines that are out there. And then the dashboard component, uh, which we'll look at here shortly, is where we're going to review the data that's been collected, uh, such as the um, charts, the overviews, search for data, look at user activity, and, and run reports, and so forth. So two different uh, purposes for these consoles. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time within the control center here, but I, I would like to show you guys with the control center um, what this application is capable of doing. Within the control center, both the dashboard and the control center uh, have this navigation pane down the left-hand side. And uh, down here towards the bottom, I've got a recording tab. And within that recording tab, I see some options such as managing the computers within my network. So I have a couple of machines here in my demonstration uh, uh, lab that I'm uh, monitoring. Allows me to see those machines, what operating system exists on those machines. And I can see that I've deployed the uh, recording agent out there and it's recording in what mode it's in, whether it's in full detail, uh, 360 mode, or the recon mode. Also here I've got a bar that allows me to manage what we call a recording profile. And within my recording profile section, uh, I've got a variety of profiles, and the one I'm real interested in here is my Windows profile. And by looking at one of these recording profiles, I can modify what I'd like to monitor on the endpoint. So a profile is essentially a group of settings, right, that I'm going to configure and I'm going to deploy this to a machine or a group of machines. Profiles are customizable. So it's one thing I'd like to make note of here with you guys is that the Spectre 360 application, although very powerful, contains a lot of functionality. You can cater it to your environment. So if productivity is your focus, you can pretty much enable or disable this functionality to match your, your focus and what information you need to gather. So it's by no means an all or nothing application. It's uh, significant uh, for you to know that it's pretty customizable uh, to your needs. The reason I wanted to open the profile or the recorder settings um, for you is so you can see the various areas of monitoring that we can enable. This uh, includes screenshots. Uh, the application by default captures the screenshot. And what that allows you to do is in the event something does happen that you want to research, uh, you ha actually have a visual of that event uh, by seeing the user's desktop at that point in time. We're able to capture communication type information. Like I was saying earlier, the chat, IM activity. Uh, we're able to see websites visited, the website traffic. What sites are my users going to? Uh, what are the top sites within my organization? Um, you know, who's going to those top sites the most? Information like that. And then how much time are they spending on those sites? Email activity, uh, communication via email, whether it's client-based like Outlook or webmail. We're able to see the uh, communication via email and the attachments in a lot of cases that may co coincide with those messages. File transfer information is your FTP, your upload, download type information. Uh, keystrokes is a very granular type feature, allows you to dig way down into the input uh, that the user is putting into the system. I know that a lot of times does uh, raise some concerns on the privacy side, and we've implemented some nice functionality here with the 360 product to where uh, if you're concerned about capturing private banking passwords, things of that nature, we can disable that functionality uh, with some of the options here. Program activity, uh, this is your application usage. You know, how long are my users spending within applications? Um, you know, what, what areas of the application are they spending their time in? How long is it open? How long are they active in it? 
Uh, this is a great productivity me measurement, uh, especially if you have, uh, you know, obviously your work-focused applications or, um, you know, particular programs that are uh, tied to the productivity of your employees. We can really track that through this option here. Same with user activity. Uh, user activity is essentially a digital time card showing you when the users logged in, when they logged off, and when they were active or inactive on that machine. Um, this has become very popular with telecommuting users, um, giving you uh, the ability to track productivity for home-based workers. Document tracking, a huge security focus, right? The ability to see files, or so, I'm sorry, folder and file movement. Uh, files moving from, let's say, the network to the local machine, to the from the local machine to a storage device, whether a removable device, uh, cloud-based storage, you know, uh, CD, DVD, or other type uh, storage devices. Obviously, in compliance-based environments, environments where you have intellectual property, um, you know, this is a big concern. We want to ensure that uh, this type of movement is tracked. And even if you are, you know, there's a lot of a lot of times you hear, well, those users just don't have access to, to that data. Well, that's not always true. What about the users that do have access to that data? Those elevated, uh, you know, users. Um, if they have access to folders and files and they can move data, how would you, you know, how would you track that and, and keep, a, uh, keep a pulse on that type of activity? So this is a big, a big area within the application is the document tracking. Once we set this up and the configurations that go around that, we deploy these settings out to the recorder and it collects data based on the settings that you've identified or you've configured here. The, um, the second part of this in the back end that I want to show you is a couple other things is that there is a web filtering piece built into the application. Uh, we do a filter a web usage based on a variety of category of websites. So whether or not you have a gateway solution or not, you can always have a secondary uh, layer of protection here with the uh, web filtering, where it basically it's filtering your web usage based on a variety of categories of inappropriate sites. And you can build your own categories, create your own lists of websites that would be uh, are not allowed as well. Also, you can proactively set this up so that you're alerted of particular events that take place. This is a really important part of the Spectre 360 application and one that I always like to show is, uh, you know, it's, we're all busy, you know, whether you're in a management position, you're an HR manager, you're a line manager, you're a COO, you're a CTO, or you're an IT administrator, no matter what your role is, you're busy. And you're not always going to have time to either remember or even just flat out have the time to go in and run reports uh, and to look at the information on an ongoing basis. So what's very important for us is that we give you a way to set this up, configure it, and then notify you of information that you're concerned with. So that at that point, without you having to remember or to set aside time to go in and run reports or look at the information that's been collected for that past, let's say, week, seven, ten days, you can receive notification of specific uh, events that take place that are of concern to you. Whether this is productivity concerns, security concerns, or communication type concerns, no matter what, we can set it up here with these alert profiles. So let's just take a couple examples here. Uh, let's say I am concerned uh, with suspect or inappropriate web usage. I can set up an alert profile, which looks something like this. And these alert profiles allow me to identify, you know, who's going to receive these alerts within my organization, who are your recipients or operators, we like to call them, and what is it that we want to be notified of. The what tab is what's real powerful about these alerts. We can utilize Boolean logic to build these statements and an or statements that allow us to say things like, in this example, if the page content is in one of my uh, inappropriate usage categories for web uh, usage, right? Or the category name of this contains any of the inappropriate categories I've identified, then I want to be notified. So this is very powerful. It's basically I've built a statement here that's saying, hey, if a user on my network that I'm monitoring goes to a site 
and that site either is part of my inappropriate use uh, categories or the content of the site is inappropriate, I'm going to be notified uh, about that. And I can uh, create these alerts and determine who I want to uh, monitor for this or set alerts up for and when I'd like to be alerted. So maybe it, um, you may, a great example of the when would be your social websites, right? Social websites have become a, a big part of uh, productivity loss. And let's say, though, that you know, we don't want to enforce this all day. Maybe during lunch hours we're going to allow the social networking sites, but outside of that, no. So we can set these times to be alerted, let's say, outside of that uh, allowed time. If we take a look at another example here in a different, let's say, area of interest, you know, maybe we want to look for uh, keywords, uh, or maybe we want to look for just suspicious, uh, let's say, some, some sort of, sort of uh, data movement or, um, you know, something that would be of a security concern. Well, here I've got one uh, that's titled Excessive Printing. And in my what, I built a pretty elaborate conditional statement now. So this is going to show you a little bit, uh, digging in a little bit deeper. Now we've got basically saying that if uh, I have a print event uh, where the, I'm printing the uh, event has a greater value of 50 and the activity contains print or the device type is a printer, I want to be notified. So this would be an example of, you know, I, I, I put Spectre 360 in the place. I know that I've established a baseline that, you know, my users never really print more than five, six, seven, eight, uh, maybe at the most 10 documents a day. If someone goes in there and I see a print job of 50 or 100, uh, I, you know, that, that raises a flag to me and I want to be notified about that. So uh, that's another example of utilizing uh, these alerts. Keyword trigger would be another good one. You know, what am I looking for? If the keystroke content contains, let's say, some sort of value, uh, and in this example, I'm going to show you guys today, I'm, I'm concerned with a project we have going on called Europa. And I've got some keywords tied to that, uh, let's say, intellectual property, top secret, project Europa, Europa uh, spreadsheet, all these various keywords or phrases that might uh, be associated with my project. I want to be notified if someone is leaking out that information. So again, just a different type of alert uh, that I can set up. So uh, these are just examples of the alerting, and I think it's very important to, uh, to mention uh, that this allows you to be very proactive, and uh, you can receive these alerts uh, based on areas of interest. So what happens after this data is uh, gathered? Uh, once this information is collected, it's going to be aggregated into a SQL database that we're going to be able to obviously report against. And we're going to look at this information utilizing that other console I mentioned called the dashboard. And this is a look at the Spectre 360 dashboard. And the dashboard is broken down again. It's got that navigation pane down the left-hand side. And we can access this data in a variety of different ways. We've given you out of the box some really nice functionality that allows you to see this information quickly and efficiently without you really having to do any type of legwork. And the first way we do that is through what we call quick view panels. That's what we're looking at here. But you notice down the left-hand side, uh, the navigation pane, we also can look at this data based on the user. We also can search for information based on keywords or phrases. We also can look at the individual data sets, uh, which, for example, I just want to see email activity. And we also can run reports, schedule reports, and so forth. So I'm going to give you an example of each of those items here in the demonstrations you can see uh, how the, uh, these different uh, approaches, um, or, or I should say, you know, how you can go about looking at the data with these different uh, different options. The quick view panels are your are your first choice there in the list, and you'll notice in the navigation pane that there is a criteria, and that criteria allows you to always set a time range, and or user and computer combination of what data you'd like to see. So in this particular example, I'm looking at my past 180 days of activity for all users and computers. That global criteria is global in nature. It will apply to everything that you're pulling up uh, within the panels here. 
These quick view panels are panels that we've built out of the box. And again, they're pretty much focused around areas of interest, whether it's productivity, security, communications, things of that nature. Uh, a great example of this is um, the productivity because we can see some, uh, obviously some just some things that every organization is concerned with. Uh, users with too much web activity, users consuming bandwidth, as you can see in that bottom right hand uh, corner with this uh, chart. This uh, particular view or the quick view really shows us that 10,000 foot overview. It really allows us to see trends it's what's going to allow us to see items quickly that are red flags or that are sticking out. You know, you notice some of these charts up top here. A couple of these items are really uh, sticking out versus the others. And a lot of times that may make sense. You know, it could be your web-based, let's say, application, right? Uh, but a lot of times uh, it can be an area of interest. Like if, since Facebook is at the top of my list here, that's that's pretty much a concern to me. If my one of my top three sites in usage over the past 180 days has been Facebook. So by gathering this information, I see these quick view panels. And these panels are completely customizable. I can select criteria of these panels and choose my criteria, my date range, my users and computers, and what events I'm looking for. I can even do things like exclude specific domains or include specific domains in this case or applications. Uh, exclude or include specific programs, and I can really drill down and look for specific data with these charts if I want to. I also can just create my own charts from scratch using uh, the built-in wizard. I can create new panels, which would allow me to save it as, let's say, custom. And then I can even go in and say I want to create a new chart. And utilizing the wizard, I can build my own chart with my own specific set of criteria. So this holds true for many aspects of the application, where we can uh, obviously make use of what is built in, but at the same time customize it to meet our needs. So let's say in this productivity chart here, I'm not happy that Facebook is in my top uh, five websites where users are spending the most time. I want to see what's happening there. Well. To get a better look into that data, I simply select that area of the chart, and it brings up the event viewer for me. The event viewer will show me on the left-hand corner here, allows me to navigate between domains. In some cases, you'll be navigating between applications or users. Uh, there's a summary pane over to the right, which allows me to see the users that, in fact, have been using Facebook. And it gives me a summary of how many times and what their time spent was on these sites. This is a very powerful metric that is part of the application, uh, what we call active focus and total time. If productivity is your concern, these measurements really give you a window into, are my users really, in, the, in fact, being super um, uh, you know, abusive of their web usage by being on Facebook all day? Or is it really just a matter of, yeah, they opened it, kind of left it running on an alternate tab, but mostly we're working throughout the rest of the time. This is uh, virtually impossible to tell with a lot of, let's say, gateway type solutions where it's showing you that, yeah, there's a connectivity or packet activity between an endpoint and, and uh, this site. This active focus in total time does a great job of showing you, yes, there was a connection, uh, total connection time to Facebook for, you know, let's say 29 minutes or six minutes, whatever it is. But their active time, meaning the time they actually spent on that site, scrolling, clicking, uh, could have been half that or a quarter of that or maybe even a fraction of that total time. Um, you know, you come into work in the morning, you like to check uh, the news, you open up the news site, you read your news for five minutes, and then you move on. You do your work, but maybe that news site was left open on, on a tab, right, a second or third tab in the browser. Well, the application then can differentiate between, yes, I actually was on that news site all day long versus, you know, yes, you looked at that news site for 30 seconds when he first got in, but then he was not active on that site for the rest of the time. You also have a kind of an in-between measurement also called focus time. That means that that application or that web page was in the front focus of the desktop. So that might mean, well, 
that could mean yes, they were reading the page or something of that nature. So you really have these three uh, individual productivity measurements uh, that are very effective in, in your overall, you know, getting a kind of looking at the scope of your overall productivity or, or individual use, user. And then I see here, you know, well, that particular user is obviously on Facebook and, uh, you know, I can see down here uh, the time, the computer, the program, the active focus and total time, the URL, and if I scroll down, I, you know, I can even see the window captions. So this gives me the ability to, uh, to really drill down. And, you know, I can see that she's looking at a profile here called Mick. You know, Mick may be a, uh, an employee also. But then I, after I look at Mick and I select it, I actually see that they were chatting uh, with Mick, probably using the Facebook chat here. If I needed further evidence of this, then I can make use of that snapshot functionality where I can see that visual of what the user was doing at that point in time. And I can play that back in real time just like a movie. So I'm looking at the user's desktop at that point in time. And this I can scrub the timeline uh, with this playback bar up top here. And that allows me to see uh, all the information uh, in a visual, uh, pers from a visual perspective. I can show the info uh, of the user and or computer that was working on that machine at that point in time. I can even drop this sequence of snapshots uh, to uh, image files or to a video that can be played back. I can even select a range of snapshots uh, that I'd like to drop, uh, drop out or export. So there we see the going from the, uh, the first look, which is the panel itself, the quick view panel, which kind of gives me an overview, overview. I could quickly see, you know, items that stuck out or were red flags. Then I looked at the individual events, which then uh, warranted even further investigation, which I can see the actual visual proof uh, of that user's activity. If I look at another example of this from a different area of interest, let's say um, communication, here I'm looking at various webmail events. And if I look at a webmail and I know that, yeah, I do have some webmail usage in my network, but it typically isn't too bad. And then suddenly I look in the webmail chart and I see spikes uh, like this particular user, Tara. Again, I can drill down, see those events. Webmail usage shows up just like client-based uh, mail, such as Outlook. I can select one of those events and I actually get a preview of the email down in the left hand, I'm sorry, down in the bottom half of the view pane here. Uh, this is showing me that she's sending an email to what looks like another individual with attachments um, uh, paste up information. Then again, if I need the visual, I go to the screenshot and it gives me that visual and I can see that particular user using the Google Mail uh, to attach those documents. So the visual is very powerful uh, and allows us to obviously see any of these items that we drill down to in action. Another area of interest would be uh, you know, your document tracking or your security type uh, events. Here we see document tracking by device, uh, local devices and or removable uh, devices, top keyword detections, uh, Dropbox is never good. Uh, we also could see document tracking on its own, which would allow us to differentiate between uh, various um, you know, movement of files, various types of files. Uh, here we see I've got 39 removable device uh, items. Where I'm looking at here, and I can even show the columns within this, I can show the device type. It shows me that there's been movement here using Windows Explorer. There's been a creation of an uh, action item, creation action on a removable disk, and I can even see the document path that it was um, being created. And again, if I want to see the visual, view screen snapshot, and that'll bring me to that particular point in time, and I can then see it using Windows Explorer, copying from the uh, particular local drive to the removable disk here, those various documents. So just different examples of uh, different areas of interest, I should say, that we can drill down to uh, effectively using even just the quick view panels that come with the application. 
Other ways uh, we can look at this are by user. So I could look at the user's uh, individual events. If I wanted to see that user Tara's individual events, I could drill down and see Tara's events, select my criteria, and it allows me to see all of Tara's events uh, from one uh, events viewer. So that's very powerful also, uh, the ability to do that for individual users. You also have the search capability. So let's say I, I wasn't really uh, seeing anything of particular interest in the overviews. I could drill down with a keyword or keyword phrase. So for instance, uh, here I have Dropbox within my search. I can select which areas of interest I want to scan for the Dropbox keyword. And by looking at this, it will bring back for me really all events you know, pertaining to Dropbox. So it scans the database, shows me I have a variety of different events pertaining to Dropbox. There's my individual users, and I've got some of them that are uh, been picked up by file transfer, so moving data probably to Dropbox, and then the document tracking, which would be the same, uh, same thing, moving folders or files to Dropbox, uploading or utilizing the Dropbox site. And again, I was, I'd be able to drill down to the desktop with a visualization of that also with a screenshot. The Data Explorer here allows me to look at the individual data sets. So whether um, I'm curious about document tracking or maybe I just want to see all email events, I can do that also. So a variety of different ways I can access this data uh, through the dashboard. And many times we want to have reports of this that we can print or we can share with the appropriate personnel. And we can do that easily with the Spectre 360 application. We can run reports based on a time frame or criteria. The reports look something like this. So this is an example of just another productivity report of website usage. And these reports can be scheduled. So you could drop these uh, reports in a variety of, variety of different formats, PDF, HTML, to uh, uh, inbox for whatever individuals need to see this information on an ongoing basis. So you could receive that daily, weekly, monthly report that you're looking for. Reports are built in, many of them, as you can see down the left-hand side here, pertaining to, again, different areas of interest and different data that's been collected. But you also can create your own reports and modify the existing uh, reports as well. So that's a good overview of the full Spectre 360 application and how it gives you that uh, insight you know, that window into what is happening within your environment. We would consider this active monitoring, right? Uh, this would be considered the active monitoring solution. It's consistently gathering this data off the uh, end user side and allowing us to review it on an ongoing basis through this dashboard. If, you, if we were to differentiate this from the passive monitoring or the recon mode, uh, we would set that up a little differently, and there would be some different areas of interest for us with Recon. If I go back to my control center, the management console here, and I look underneath my event alerts, you'll notice that I have a specific uh, item here called Manage Recon Alerts. So with Recon, we deploy the recording uh, profile out, but in the Recon mode, we've told it that we, you know, we want to keep that data there uh, locked away on the local machine. So Recon keeps that data locked away in the local machine for a running 30-day period, and it's not accessible unless one of the Recon profiles that we've set up here alerts us that an event has taken place and we, cho we choose to go in and unlock that data. So the Recon profiles become important for us because these profiles will determine what type of events uh, you know, what, what, what content uh, of, on the uh, end user side would trigger this alert. So you notice here I've got uh, two different recon profiles. One is called uh, the default, which comes built in. And then another one that I, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, that I've built called Project Europa. So Europa is that project that I've got going on where I've uh, tied some keywords to that because I want to be notified of any type of um, data movement or communication 
that's taking place involving that project. Because I know that only a handful of people are involved in this project, and if I'm getting alerts on this, then something is leaked, and I need to be notified about it. Recon is interesting because it allows you to notify individuals via email of this particular action. You also can email the, I'm sorry, you can also alert the current user via a pop-up on their desktop. This is an interesting concept that kind of goes down this path of behavioral shaping within our environment where uh, if users are notified pretty much real time that, hey, you've violated the acceptable use policy, uh, this could be very uh, helpful in your productivity and uh, your compliance. So what we're going to do here with the recon profile is we're going to identify what users we want to monitor. And then we're going to set our operators. So this is who would be notified, right, of this particular event. And then we're going to set our keywords. And in my keyword here, I've chosen my keyword group called Project Europa. Project Europa contains some keywords such as secret, intellectual property, uh, the project name itself, Europa, and any variation of that. I'm going to define those keywords, and then I'm going to turn on this and uh, put recon into action. You'll notice underneath the computers that I'm uh, monitoring, I have this Windows 7 machine here that is running the recon uh, client. So how would this work? Well, if I go to that recon client, I'm logged in here as a Windows 7 machine. I'm logged in here as uh, this user, Tara. So if Tara decides she's going to go ahead and send an email to her friend, Frank, and she's going to tell Frank that she's got information about Project Europa, let's see what happens uh, with the recon monitoring in place. Now, keep in mind, I've got the uh, notification to send an email to an administrator as well as display a pop-up to the user. So we're going to call the subject of this, keep this a secret. I have information on the Europa project. Call me after work. So various keywords that I've put into my recon alert profile, I've, I've uh, violated here. Uh, top secret would be one of them, or secret. Uh, Europa project would be another one. Information might be another one that I have within that. And I'm going to go ahead and send that. Notice this little pop-up. Notice you may have violated the acceptable use policy. Click here to view the alerts. Well, what is this? Well, she selects that. And it tells her pretty much real time, right, acceptable use policy violation. Keywords were detected in your email uh, for that, you know, exactly for my Europa project, right? So on the end user side, if I decide to utilize those pop-ups, uh, they would immediately uh, receive uh, notification that they violated the acceptable use policy. On the back end, from the administrative standpoint, if I look at my email inbox for my administrator, I receive a notification here, Spectre 360 Recon Alert, and it shows me, my Spectre admin, that an alert for the following Recon Alert profile, you will receive an email each time this alert is triggered. An alert was triggered for your profile, Project Europa. In an email activity, these keywords were detected. This took place from this user on this computer. So I get notification immediately, pretty much, that Tara sent an email uh, containing uh, information about my project Europa. Notice something interesting with this email. The content of the email uh, is not displayed. We are maintaining that privacy, right? We're, we have that balance here with recon between privacy and the necessary security in place. So at this point, I can review this. I may have to review this with a number of individuals uh, within the organization based on my policy and come together and decide is this just cause to go in and unlock Terra's data and pull it up into the database? And that's how recon works. And if, I were, if we decided no, then we leave it be. If we decided yes, we would go to that recon client and we would modify the licensing mode back to detail, which you would see here underneath the uh, computer 
configuration. Once I set that to detail mode uh, the, and update the client, the client would then send all of Terra's information for the past 30 days up to the database to be reviewed. All right, everyone. So that's a, a good overview of the Spectre 360 application uh, and how the Spectre 360 application can be utilized both in the active monitoring mode, uh, the detail mode, or uh, in the passive mode with the recon um, client in place. So Thanks so much, Matt. That was uh, that was really great. Um, there are a couple of questions here, but I just want to point out to anybody on the line that if you have additional questions, that uh, question chat is uh, is right in the go to meeting console. So you can just uh, enter them there, and we'll go through the couple we have. Um, is are you all done, Matt? Can we move on to questions, or did you have a couple of more items? Yeah, we can definitely take questions, Ezra, and uh, we've got some information up on the screen here for you guys. Uh, if you're interested in uh, taking a look at the application, we have some links here. Uh, you can make note of those links. We also have a great white paper uh, that uh, involving uh, employee monitoring that you might want to take a look at. And then obviously our contact information, uh, we'll leave that up on the uh, screen as well. Sure, and all of that information will be emailed out to all the attendees so that uh, you guys will get that on an email. Um, this this session was recording, so if you want to share a link of the recording to others as well, um, we'll be able to pass that along. Um, the the first question here is: uh, Is there a way to whitelist websites? That's a uh, a great question, and you can uh, within the different categories or different uh, filtering rules that you set up with Inspector 360. You can obviously exclude or include specific domains for sure uh, maybe you can um, maybe you can show them how um, we can explicitly um, exclude recording on specific domains to uh, further protect employee privacy I don't know if you still have your demo environment open but I know that that's a that's a, a, a very um, a, a very good feature where um, we can say record all activity except for let's say this banking website or this social media website where we are going to not monitor employee activity. Uh, I think I can show, I think I can give you a little bit of insight into that, yeah. So we have a web filtering uh, option here. We have uh, manager filtering rules and you can create a new rule and you can enable or, or utilize these rules, and you can allow or, or block uh, certain sites. You can determine who you want to block, when, and what. And here you've got uh, the ability to choose specific categories of sites that you want to block, uh, all websites, etc. So that's one uh, one option that you have within these rules. I, w I was talking about the one in the profiles. Uh, that's a little. Yep. That's. Uh, that's a little different also. Uh, within the profile, this is an interesting, actually an interesting concept that you bring up because uh, the one within the profile, we get a lot of questions about what happens when my users leave the network. And what's interesting about the profile-based rules uh, is that they apply even when the uh, user becomes remote or, or mobile. And um, you've got a variety of different uh, blocking capabilities, both websites, chat, and so forth. And you can uh, block websites in the list. Uh, you can also allow access only to websites within this list uh, as well. Cool. Hey, you know, that leads perfectly into the next question, which is, what about remote users? So um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Spectre 360 and remote users? Yeah, remote users, um, you know, this is, a, this is a situation that is very common, obviously. And uh, the Spectre 360 uh, recording capabilities are always going to take effect whether or not the machine is connected to your network or is off the network. Uh, even off the network, it's gathering the information that you've selected, holding it there locally until it then can sync back up once they're reconnected to the network. So both uh, uh, connectivity-wise, you're looking at both on and off the network. The recorder is doing its job, for sure. Awesome. Um, this question is related to uh, your recon demo, and it's uh, do I need a detail license to switch from recon mode to detail mode? That's a good question, and uh, that is the case. Um, 
Recon licenses are specific to recon. So if, if you wanted to uh, move machines in and out of these two different modes, you definitely wouldn't need a detail license yet. Okay. Um, and then um, a question about um, whitelisting and issues with antivirus. Um, I, I know we have a bunch of documentation on that. Um, can you uh, give us a little bit of insight there? Sure. I mean, uh, and we also have uh, another engineer a colleague. Uh, Steve is on the line here too. Steve, you can chime in also at any point. Uh, we got a lot of questions here uh, regarding some great topics and and the antivirus is. Uh, you know, by the very nature of how they build antivirus, is to look for things running at a very low level. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't look like uh, you know something that should be there. Now, it's it's a, it's kind of a, the job of the AV is to look for these type of items. Well, our job is to to operate at a very low level so that you can see everything that's taking place on the machine. So obviously, uh, we have partnerships with a variety of AV vendors. Uh, they've whitelisted us, but there are so many different types of AV out there that it's impossible for us to uh, have those relationships with everyone. So we've, we, we thoroughly document uh, the exclusions that you would need to put in place within your environment to ensure that there's no conflicts with AV. And uh, to the person who asked that question, we'll follow up with something specific regarding uh, your use case. Uh, somebody else is asking about multiple monitors. If, if somebody leaves a site open on their second screen, um, how does that report in the activity history, um, uh, even e even if they're working solely on their first monitor? Steve, do you want to address that? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Um, the beauty of uh, how the recorder is capturing activity, we're using three different time metrics. You mentioned one of them, active time. There's also focus time and total time. So if they pulled over, let's say, Facebook over to their second monitor and they just left it running there, or maybe Pandora Radio, that's actually in focus, but they're not active. Active is keyboard mouse activity, so when they're typing, clicking, scrolling up and down. So no, they're not really active in it, but we are monitoring the focus time and how long it was open before they closed it. So I, I, I think in, in answering his question, the question, the answer is yes, we are monitoring it and capturing all the detail, but we have our own terminology for whether it's active focus or total time. So it might be a, a, a focus screen, but it's not active unless he's actually interacting with it or the end user is, correct? Correct. OK. Um, and and it, just a, a side note, uh, is there a limitation on, on number of monitors or anything like that? Well, we can capture up to eight monitors. And, and that's just in the screen snapshots. But as far as I know, in the activity, it's, it's as much activity as there is, correct? Up to eight monitors. Up to eight monitors, OK. Um, the next question is, where is the data held? On your servers or on, on, on um, the, uh, the company network? That's a, that's a great question also. Um, you know, I think Steve can talk to this as well. Due to the very nature of what we do and the, and the sensitivity of the data that you're collecting, we don't we don't house that data for you. That's information that's held uh, on your side and your network uh, in that encrypted database. Um, there are, you know, uh, we've decided we've made a decision up to this point that it, it is not in your best concern or our best concern from a security perspective to have hold that data. Okay. Um, and then there's a really great, great question here, which is I know something we're all actively working on here at Spectrosoft, and that's um, uh, on the remote workforce, is there a way to distinguish if your internal IT group is monitoring as opposed to unauthorized access? So it sounds almost like, um, you know, who's, who's auditing the auditors type of questions. Um, and I, I know we're about to um, release a whole bunch of information on, um, on um, administrator monitoring. Can you guys speak to that at all? Yeah, I, I can go ahead and answer that, Matt. Uh, so built into the product uh, within the management console is something called um, auditing. You turn that feature on and it is disabled by default, but essentially it monitors everything that the admin could be doing within that control center. So any changes, modifications to the recorder setting profiles, deploying recorders to machines they shouldn't be, or uninstalling recorders, every bit of that is going to be captured even down to the date and time stamp, what admin did it, and the before and after changes. So we'll, we'll definitely capture that. And also something new in 8.1 release is uh, something called administrator tracking, 
which are predefined custom charts uh, that will uh, literally monitor everything that an admin could be doing. So what tools they could be accessing, you know, on the network. So that that's good if you're monitoring IT as well. And that's coming out, uh, I believe, next week, right, Ezra? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's scheduled yep. for Tuesday. Um, I I think that is it for today. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, both of you guys for uh, giving such a great presentation. And uh, to all of our attendees, thank you as well. Like I said, you should get a follow-up email from us uh, within a couple of days here with links to the recording, the presentation we used, um, some additional assets. and. Um, uh, hopefully we can have further discussions with all of you. Thank you so much. If we, by the way, if we missed out any questions, um, we will be following up with. Uh, we'll, we will be following up on them individually. So uh, thanks so much, guys. All right. Thanks, Ezra, and thanks everybody for uh, being on the webinar today.